Okay, so welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are talking about Guram Vesalia's new brand called VTMNTS. Supposed to be that more, it's kind of confusing. But before I continue, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Fashion Roadman for all your fashion news. <laughs> So founded in 2014, Vetmore, a brand that actually starts for clothing in French, was a brand that took the fashion world by storm. It was started by Guron Vesalia, who was running the business aspect of it, and Demna Vesalia, who obviously was the designer and more the creative side behind the brand. It was a brand that intelligently made a mockery of fashion while existing and profiting off the same system it was criticizing. It was a living case study. And while a lot of people do focus on how outrageous it could be, there were other elements that, in my opinion, made the brand really intelligent. Demna Vesalia worked at Margiela and Louis Vuitton before starting his own brand, and he has mentioned that part of the DNA of Vetements came from Margiela. You can actually see this DNA in the deconstruction and tailoring, especially in the earlier Vetmon collection. Being put in certain boxes and also facing some kind of like, I would say, fashion xenophobia. I don't know if I can explain that, but you know, it's hard to get through in this industry. And I had a lot of anger about it. You know, the DHL thing, it wasn't just out of blue. It was because we couldn't even, I mean, I couldn't afford to pay those DHL bills that were coming in at the beginning of, you know, when I started the brand and we would order fabrics and send prototypes. It was a big issue for me. And, um, and it found way, you know, into a product through, through my kind of absorbing it and, you know, in a way, spitting it out into, into the fashion uh, dimension. So there was a lot of pain in me, I think, and a lot of struggle that I faced. Um, also in within the fashion context and I think my work always spoke about that you know it, directly or indirectly it was in me but to me what I think really really made Vetmore an intelligent brand was despite all the irony and all the jokes that the brand was making, making a mockery of fashion, there were some deeply rooted references that were embedded all in those jokes and a good example is the Spring Summer 19 collection where we saw a lot of references from the war that Demna and Guram had to face in Georgia, which caused them to actually flee the country. And when you look at this collection, you see a lot of things from military gear to the flags of the countries involved, t-shirts with bullet targets. I remember um, quite early in your careers when I remember talking to you and Guram, your brother, about your mm -hmm. difficult war-filled childhood in the USSR in Georgia and how your family was forced to flee to uh, Germany, I think Dusseldorf, wasn't it? Exactly, yes. I've seen Vetmar shows of yours that look quite war-torn and, and angry, angry. But now you're 40 mm -hmm. years old, yeah. do you still feel the scars or is life much calmer and softer for you? Well, I, I don't know, I kind of, I have to say that uh, pandemic did something to me where I had time to be at home and to, you know, to have time to reconnect to myself. Um, and to let that anger go. I think that the scars of struggle and the scars of war especially, kind of scars that we, you know, we carry them all our lives in a way. But I think I'm also grateful to those scars because I realize that I am who I am today, you know, thanks to that. And it also made me a creative that I am today, I think, because I, um, I kind of learned to survive through those hardships and um, because through, you know, during the pandemic, I really realized how grateful I am, even to those painful moments that I went through. A lot of the oversized silhouettes were a reference to his orthodox Christian upbringing and the type of flowy clothing that the priests would wear. And the aspect of going against the fashion system, it went more than just things like clothing. When we think of modeling, in fashion, it's always this thing that everyone has to look young and beautiful and all this sort of stuff. And Vetmore went against that and they were casting models just off the street and they were using older models in their campaigns. Not that they were the first to do that, but it just shows that this idea of being anti-fashion was really embedded in every single aspect of the brand. And so when looking at Vetmore, it is really a brand that pushed luxury norm core to its absolute limit. And it's something that Demna has continued to do at Balenciaga. 
A lot of the styling also was typical of everyday dressing of Balkan women. And a lot of the advertisement campaigns also had very heavy Slavic references, whether we're talking about the backgrounds used or the way things were styled or the colors that were used or the way models were posed. However, in 2019, Demna Vesalia left Vetmore to focus on his work at Balenciaga. And so he left it in the hands of his brother who he created the brand with. So if you want to learn more about Vetmore, I have actually reviewed the Spring Summer 20 collection, which was Demna's last collection at the brand. And there's also another YouTube channel called Slavic Snow White, and she's from Ukraine. And she's made a few reviews on Vetmore. And I think her channel is really amazing to check out because she has like the cultural references and she's grown up with those references. And she talks about all the Slavic references of Vetmore. So I think her channel is a really, really good channel to check out. And so my issue with Vetmore since Demna left, I'm not saying that Guram isn't a good designer, but that is not his forte. He is not Demna. He is not the person that was going to intern at Magella and Louis Vuitton. He's not a creative mind in the way that Demna is, obviously. You just have to look at their track records. He was more the logistics and the business person. And I feel like Vetmore since Demna left has kind of lost this edge and they're trying too hard to kind of make the same jokes, but it doesn't have the same effect because when Demna was there, the, the jokes and the irony, they were progressing with the very deep rooted sort of Slavic and Balkan references. And it was all this package that made it really good. And now I think is missing some of the essence of the, the underlying intelligent references under the jokes. I think that's what's missing. And what is left is more so just making jokes that are too on the nose to the point where it's just a bit annoying and it's almost gotten irritating. And I think this is something that Guram realized. And so earlier this year, he launched a new brand that is called VTMNTS. And I don't know how to pronounce this because it just seems like you pronounce it vet more. And he is claiming that he is hoping that the brand can redefine traditional luxury for the younger generation. Now, if I had a dollar for every time I've heard a designer or a brand, any time they're launching a brand say that sort of phrase, I'd literally be a millionaire. Now, according to an article I read in Women's Wear Daily, the brand claims that the name was chosen because it meant to prove that everything isn't always about the name and the focus is more on the clothing. Now that makes absolutely no sense because if everything isn't about the name, you wouldn't tie it so closely to Vetmore or you wouldn't make the name so closely associated with Vetmore because with the way this brand is spelt, everyone is going to think that more before they think of the name. So that statement really doesn't make any sense to me. That being said, when you look at this collection, there are many different aspects that are quite interesting. The first thing is that Guron proposed a new logo for this brand, which is essentially a barcode. And now beside this barcode, you see the numbers 838-363. 687. Now I couldn't actually find any significance to this number. So if anyone knows what the significance is of this number, let me know. Because I'm sure that it's not just a random number. I'm sure there's like something to it. And to quote something Guram actually said, he said, personally, I don't wear logos. And those like me who don't might say, well, maybe I could wear a little barcode, which is kind of an interesting way of proposing like a logo instead of having like letters of a brand or just pasting the the letters of a brand sort of like have a barcode with certain numbers and um, that's very significant to the brand. I think that's quite an interesting proposition. Another quote that really did interest me and it was kind of a dig at Margiela um, is that they said the logo will only be recognized by those in the know and then he went on to criticize fashion houses for running their designs putting logos that were graphically meant for inside labels. And now when you think of that, the only one you could possibly think of is Margiela because of course Margiela had the idea of having the, the stitches, the white stitches as sort of a very low key signifier that that is a Margiela piece. And then what did the brands do once he left the brand? They literally turned it into a logo and printed that on the front of shirts or things like the number system. They print that on t-shirts now, which is so against the DNA of what Martin Margiela stood for. Um, so I think that was sort of a slight dig, which is kind of hilarious. And now, even though this collection is tailored towards menswear, there are many elements that suggest the clothing is for anyone, regardless of your gender identity. There were t-shirts with different pronouns from he, him, they, them, and she, her, that can be seen in this collection. And there was also a t-shirt that said yes, which I'm guessing is supposed to represent ideas of things like consent. 
Um, which is kind of an interesting thing to bring up. Of course, it does remind me of stuff that Demna has done. Even recently, we saw the Balenciaga hoodie that said gay on it, and it had, I think, pride under, which is sort of just a reference to gay pride. Of course, Demna is openly gay. So I understand where that reference is coming from. If I was to be really critical, I think we always do need to look at both sides, because I think a lot of people that review shows, they just sort of present the ideas without sort of seeing both sides and I had a lot of my gay friends at the time that were saying that when Demna Vesalia did that gay hoodie, the gay pride hoodie, uh, they had an issue with it because even though Demna's gay, it's kind of commoditizing people's identity for a big company which is Kering, which owns Balenciaga and when you look at the power dynamics of it, it's not really doing that much for gay pride by putting gay on a Balenciaga hoodie. And this is a very similar criticism I've heard in terms of the way Demna used to reference things when he was at Vetmore. There's someone I know who's from Serbia and every time I speak to her, I remember when Vetmore collections would come out and the, what Demna does at Balenciaga. And every time he has a print that's very Balkan, um, she's always like, I oh, like, this is the type of print that I see in Serbian markets. And she'll literally take a picture. And the way that the women that are standing in the market style their clothing, the way the silhouette of their dresses look that they've thrifted, the print, it's literally like, I cannot make this up. It's literally the same as like some of the stuff that Demna makes. So it's very clear where his references come from. And a lot of people have an issue with the fact that he's taking styles of, you know, working class people in the Balkan regions and sort of selling it for extortionate prices. And as much as it's sort of a case study on making fun of fashion, he is profiting off of that at the same time. And that's why I feel like it's good to bring these things up. Yes, he's within his rights to make those references. He's someone that literally suffered from the war. Guram and Demna are two people that literally had to flee their country because of war. So it's, it's definitely something that is tied very closely to them. But I do think it's very good to look at both sides when presenting this information. But back to the VT MNTS collection. Guram has said there'll be a big focus on jewelry and accessories with the brand. And there was some jewelry that even costed more than $20,000, which is absolutely crazy. And when you also look at the footwear, something that surprised me was that there weren't many sneakers. And you can see the models wearing different variations of black and white boots. And some had different prints like F off, let go, hardcore. And these type of things, they're so vetmore. Like, they're, they're such things that you would expect from vetmore that I don't see why you had to make a whole different brand just to do stuff that's similar to what he and his brother were doing at Vetmore. It's just a bit confusing. And aesthetically, we get many similar elements to Vetmore as well, whether we're talking about the tailored trousers or the oversized overcoats, the sweatshirts. But one thing that I did find very interesting was how they used this new proposed barcode logo as a print. There were these white and red pieces that had the barcodes as prints. And I actually liked the way they looked aesthetically. I just really liked them. And there were brown trousers that were referencing Eastern European school uniforms, which once again, very Vetmore, you know, referencing Eastern European culture, clothing from the Balkan region, like Slavic references. That is what the DNA of Vetmore is with irony embedded in there. So this new brand really is just another Vetmore, to be honest. But the more interesting thing that he said was that the clothes are going to be made to a very high standard and their goal is to give their young, cool generation the same quality and feeling that Hermes gives their sophisticated clientele. Now that is a very hefty statement because of so many brands that have watered down their quality, especially brands like Balenciaga, um, doing production in very cheap factories in China and thinking that none of us would notice. But yeah, that's a bold statement that I hope Guram lives up to. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on this new brand. Um, there were, I was reading a lot of articles where a lot of journalists were trying to say that it's not the same as Vetmore because this has more of a focus on gender identity. To me, it's just another Vetmore, to be honest. But comment down below your thoughts below. I really want to know what people think about this. If you think it's like very different to Vetmore, I really want to know. And of course, a lot of work goes into making these videos. 
So if you want to support this channel financially, then you can by subscribing to the Patreon. And if you subscribe to the Patreon, of course, there are loads of videos on my Patreon, exclusive content that you can go and watch as well. Um, so you can support my channel and also get access to exclusive content. But on that note, I'll be back with another video very soon.